it's so nice to be here. And I feel like I've got to apologise, you know, Galel, because this is like another gym in Birmingham. I'm a Brummie and I haven't been here before. So shame on me. You've been here now, haven't I'm here now. And what a beautiful club this is. I'd like to know if it's all right with you, just a little bit of a history about it. Because I was speaking to your brother earlier and he was like, we used to live at the back of it. We used to go to school in front of it. And then this was the boxing gym. Let us know a little bit about the history of this beautiful place. Yeah, really. Probably not next door, really. Um, yeah, it's in the city of Birmingham, you know, it's a big one from here. Um, yeah, we started up here. Um, Bluetooth, yeah. That right, yeah? Yeah. Just Carry on. Just start again. No, no, it's good. Um, yeah, good. We lived, like I said, we lived over the road. It wasn't too far for us. Um, and then we ended up coming back to, to come train here, ultimately. And, yeah, it was an uh, unbelievable gym, you know, it's old school, it's like, it's like a rocky gym, like when you come in here, um, a bit colder than I'd probably like, but um, now it's nice that we can um, help people, help kids and bring them in the gym. How important is that? Obviously, I'm from Birmingham, I know what it's like, I was brought up on the other side of town to you. But how important is it to like get the kids into fighting and like after school, you know what it's like. Sometimes they're like hanging around on the streets, yeah. usually by the shops, possibly getting into fights on the street. So when there's like a community boxing club somewhere that they can go after school, how important is that for the kids? You know I mean, what? what did it teach you? Yeah, it's massively important. Like obviously it's easy for me to say, yeah, it's really important because I did it, but not everyone's gonna be a champion or do boxing for the rest of their lives. It can it can help you in just getting you know, getting up the street, meeting new kids, getting a bit of confidence. Um, whether it's boxing or football, whatever it is. Um, but we chose boxing, and you know you see a lot of kids here. Um, I've got I've got my nephew, my little nephew here. I've got uh, my, my little brother who, who comes here. You know I'll have friends, kids that will come here. So you know they've seen us come through the doors, and you know our pictures up on the wall. And, they all wanna, they wanna aspire to that as well, and hopefully they can. And if not, it doesn't matter. They've come here, they've learned something, they've learned how to throw a punch, they've got a bit more confidence, made friends, um, and most importantly, they got off the street and they, and they do something with their talent. What was it like the first time you stepped through the door? That you know, I've just, I think I seen one of the original coaches that was here as well. Is it yeah. Frank? Frank, yeah, he's yeah. a great man. Yeah. What was it like the first time you walked through the door? I know you had the privilege of your yeah. brothers being here, but your first time through the door, first time you're putting yeah, on yeah. the gloves. You know what, it's a scary feeling, like, you, you know what I mean? You're worried, you walk through the door, it's cold, that, that sweaty smell, that the smell of the bag, the leather, um, and you're a bit intimidated, you know, you see the big geezers hitting the bag and, you know, you're thinking, I want to I hit the bag like them and see people skipping and looking good and in the mirror, shadow boxing, and it's like, it's just something that, you know, you look up to the older guys in there and then obviously you become the older guy and then you become the best boxer. So it's, um, yeah, it was an intimidating moment, but I got used to it. Would you say that time flies when you're in the boxing gym? Like the years, it's like you start one day and then it's sort of almost like you're in year two and it's like, OK, yeah. do you want to take this seriously? All right, we're going to register you properly as an amateur. You're going to start to have those fights. What about that light like, time span? Did it go quite quickly before you like walk through the door and then you turned amateur more or less when? Yeah, mine was pretty quick to be fair. You know, I started boxing a bit later, yeah, like 17, 18. So, Did yeah, I started boxing late. So I was quickly like thrusted into fighting. Um, and I, I, remember, I remember Frank telling me, the coach at the time, um, that I got you a fight. And I, I remember shitting myself up thinking, I've got to actually go and fight somebody now. Um, it's, it's easy doing it in the gym and you're sparring and, and you're comfortable around people. And then you gotta go and fight somebody else who you don't know, you don't know of, never seen, never heard of. So yeah, I think um, I think every boxer would tell you their first fight. It's uh, it's worrying. How do you get over those nerves, or, or when did they um, stop? I know what you mean because obviously I've been in a boxing gym. I've had a few spars myself, and sometimes even when I'd hear sparring, yeah. it would turn my stomach. So yeah. I get it. So what was it like? When did that those nerves switch off, and then you start to put in the skill, everything that you've learned? You know what? Uh, in fights, it, it will never go, nerves never go. You have to be nervous in fights. Even now, you know, I'm an Olympic champion, I've boxed all over the world. Still get nervous in a fight, you have to. I think if you don't, I think you must not like it enough um, because I care about it too much and, you know, other boxers will tell you as well. Um, but I remember being so scared for my first fight and it took me years and years and years to just kind of get used to it, do you know what I mean? And, and even now, I'm still not 100% used to it. Um, 
there's nothing normal about getting in the ring and fighting with somebody. Um, but I'm just a little bit better now, so it's a bit easier. Just a bit better. Yeah, it's a bit better. Medalist. Yeah. The only one. Just yeah. a bit better. Nah, yeah, thank the guy that I'm a little bit better. Did you feel bad, like, leaving the gym when you had to go over to GB? Was it, like, a bit of a sad moment because you're used to your coaches? And then it's like, right, pack your bags. Yeah. It, it's the big time now. You're going to yeah. go to the Olympics. What was that like? You know what? It was, it was like, a bittersweet moment for me, you know. I wanted to box for Great Britain. To box for Great Britain, you have to go to Sheffield and train there. Um, so, yeah, everyone was happy for me. I was happy. Um, I, didn't, I don't mind where I train, you know. I'd been here for years and Frank had helped me to get to that position. So it's kind of like, go and do your, your own thing now. And I always make sure to come back uh, on the weekends and I always come see Frank and come see everyone at the gym. So I was never fully gone. So yeah, we can. I like that. And the fact that there's still like pictures of you and your brothers all the way around the gym. And obviously this community event, I didn't know that yourself and you, your brothers are actually involved in this gym, yeah. the payback. So you didn't just come here as like a 17 year old, you yeah. went away got your medal, turned professional, come back, and now you're helping the same community that you came from. Yeah. Tell us about that and yeah. why you did that. I just, we, you know what? We wanted to we wanted to give back, obviously. And I know everyone says that we want to give back, but... But the, some people don't know. Yeah. They're allowed to say it, but they don't. Yeah, you know what it was? It was our old coach, Frank, who's like 89 now. So, you know, he's getting on and, you know, he's not been very well. So I thought, who better to take over the gym and to help the kids? and. You know, my brothers are retired now, Pound Gamal, so I think it's good for them to, to do, do it more full-time than myself. Obviously, I'm still boxing, but I'm always here. I'll always come back and help whenever I need to. And it's good to have the fight in Birmingham and, and a big fight next week because we've got the matchroom team here and, you know, helping the kids. And it, it creates a little bit of a buzz as well. And hopefully we can continue to do that for the future. I'd like to ask, and it's obviously for anybody that's in, like, the Sparkbrook, the Small Heath area, the other side of five ways I like to call it yeah. how would people like come into the gym if there's any parents listening you know kids might be a bit getting a bit out of hand and they want some discipline in their life they want to take them off the streets all kids that think you know what I want to be like Galal yeah. I want to be like one of the yak buyers what would they need to do to join this gym come and it's Birmingham gym. City Amateur Boxing yeah. Club by yeah, the Birmingham way City Amateur Boxing Club it's it's a, it's a well-known gym in Birmingham and Anyone come to this gym, like whether you're small, big, young, old, girl, boy, whoever, and I think when you come in here, it can give you the confidence, get you up in the street. Um, you know, hopefully we've paved the way for kids in the area and, and beyond as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get a few kids here and try and change their lives. Yeah, there's definitely a few in here today. But I'm going to go and ask you about your friend, Fraser Clark, because last time we spoke, he was getting ready to go over there to have his fight with Fabio Wardley for the British Championship. Um, I didn't go out there, I watched it at home. Uh, and unfortunately, we only got to round number 13, as it were. What was it like for you to watch that? Because like I said, you two were like yeah, yeah. very close. So yeah. what was that like for you? Yeah, you know what? It was horrible to watch. Obviously, he's one of my best mates. Um, it was sad to watch, but it's one of the things that can happen in not just headweight boxing, but boxing overall. And, more so in his weight, he's a heavyweight, they can pack a punch, um, it feels dangerous. Um, to fair, I actually saw him today, come on to Sheffield to, to watch me train, so it was, um, it was good to see him. We always keep in contact and um, hopefully he'll be back soon and if he can, he can dust himself up and uh, just, just carry on. And the main thing is, yeah, we're not always going to win, but he's trying, he's, he's done well, he's an Olympic medalist and hopefully he can do the best he can as a pro and do well. Um, but hopefully he just, you know, keeps his head up and he just does well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him come back and obviously I do need to catch up with him as well. I'd also like to ask you about uh, Ben Whittaker's fight, obviously another GB member, another Olympic medalist, silver. Talk to us about that fight and, um, and just where it went wrong and it's from a fighter's point of view. Obviously, it takes a fighter to tell the full story, the real story, but I haven't caught up with Ben yet. So when you're watching it, Galal, what did you see? I don't, you know what, you could, I couldn't really see properly. I don't know if, I know he obviously got injured. The guy fell on top of him. No one really knows how injured he was. And I know people have given him stick and whatnot, but I know Ben more personal and he's a friend of mine as well. And he's a top fighter. Like, I'll tell anyone straight, Ben was one of the best kids on GB. Technically, he was probably the best. 
there was probably two or three of them that were the best and he was up there. Um, technically, it was unbelievable. Um, do I think he beat him if he fights him again? I do think he beats him. Obviously, he needs, he needs to make sure he's training properly. Um, and I think he's levels above him. Um, but Liam Cameron's got a good fighter too. He's no mug. Um, he's a good fighter. Um, he's, he's seen he had a close fight with Lyndon Arthur. Um, he's got experience. And I just think Ben, he's a top fighter and I'm hopefully he can sh show that in the future and prove everyone wrong. Do you think, like, for him, it's best that he goes straight back into that fight or would you suggest that he has another fight first? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Good question. I, I don't really know. I think only Ben What would you team. do? I don't, I don't, I, only Ben will know what it was really like in there. I, it's a good question. I, I don't really know, to be fair. It, it's whatever he, him and his, his team decide. But do I think Ben is good enough to beat him? Of course, Ben is. Ben, I think he's levels above. But he's got to make sure he's training hard. Um, but like I said before, Liam Cameron is no mug. Um, so he's always going to be, you know, a, t a toughish fight. How do you keep a level head in boxing? I get it, like, you were signed as a superstar, I remember. You were fighting for, I think it was a silver belt. You went yeah. into a 10-rounder. This was on your debut. Yeah, it was, yeah. I remember Eddie, like, singing from the rooftops how gassed he was to sign you, you yeah. know, an Olympian. How do you keep your head? Because um, isn't it easy for, like, to get, like, fully, like, gassed up from that and then you can forget who you are and yeah. you've got your brothers as well that were that are there before you. So how do you like yeah, say like you know chills? Don't, don't bother me too much, man. Like, I'm, you know what it is? I'm just boxing. I, I enjoy boxing. But like, when I started, I enjoyed boxing. I wanted to get out of my job. Um, then it be then it became my job. And then I was getting paid for it. And then I'm going to Olympics. And then I'm going to another Olympics. And then I'm winning gold. And then it's I'm going pro. So I just think it's I'm just successful in boxing. Like I'm not at the top yet, but I'm a little bit more successful than I was when I started. Um, I think it's just my personality. Like, obviously, I want to do well. Um, hopefully, I do. See what happens. And what is the biggest lessons that you've learned from your two older brothers that have walked this path that you're in now? Um, I don't know if I've learned lessons. I've always pretty much done what I needed to do and what I knew I needed to do. Um, help me with pointers and whatnot. But they're just trying to keep me on a straight and narrow. But I think I'm too old now to go off, off, off the rails. I'm too old now, you know. They can only say and do so much. We've all got our own lives. Um, hopefully I just, hopefully I become world champion, but hopefully I win next week and it, and it starts from there. So, see what happens. I'm going to talk to you about next week, next week, because I know you've got a week full of media. You've got public workouts, press conferences, weigh-ins, and then the fight itself. So I'm going to save that. Yeah. about next week until next week but thank you so much for inviting me down to your gym it's a beautiful place Happy. and thank you for giving back to the community as well you and your brothers it means a lot you don't know how many kids lives in here that you're changing and potentially saving hopefully it's as a plan and hopefully we can get kids through the door and maybe try and change their lives just a little bit people say i'm toxic and honestly i don't care